he's involved in a lot of uh, different activities in terms of his church, in terms of USPTA. He presents nationally and internationally, and really is able to do all of this because of his ability to be able to delegate to his staff. So we're uh, really fortunate to be able to hear from someone who's able to do what he's wanted to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. Before I start with uh, the auto delegation, a light bulb hit me 15 years ago. I've got two girls that are uh, about 23 and 21. They're the best of buddies, I'm with BFFs now. But what happened was, when they were five and six years old, uh, I switched jobs from Pittsburgh to back to Richmond. And we moved them during the school year, so we said, let them finish the school year, and once they're done, we're going to move back to Richmond. So I was Mr. Mom for one year, and my wife drove back and forth Monday through Thursday from Richmond to Pittsburgh, six hours on Friday. So I was Mr. Mom from Sunday through Friday. So what I do, as angry as I am, I'd write up a menu, you know, Monday, what would mom eat, Tuesday, so I'd cook. So I told the girls, look, uh, kids, I have not been Mr. Mom in years, so I'll do my best. I'll do my cooking the best, but let's see how it goes. But I do promise all of you that I will not have any work when I get back home. So a week later, we sat down and I said, girls, how do you think dad did as Mr. Mom? Yeah. They both looked at each other like, well, girl, you can be honest with me. Well, dad, we're gonna give you a B minus. I'm like, wow. I was like, really? I said, well, what do you mean, dad? I was like, well, Initially, we thought we were going to give you an F. Whoa. You know, you know, Dad, you've always said you would not bring, you know, work at home. And we heard you, so we never believed you. Because I promised us, look, when you guys are at school, I'll get all my work done. When you guys come back home, 100% toward you. And that hit home. And I was like, well, how can I do all this stuff, manage my family, and do everything? Delegation. And it's tough to go. So I'd like to share some ideas and thoughts on delegation and take it from there. Please step in any time you have any questions. So this is dear to me. I, mean, I love educating and being here. This is the number one passion. Second thing is being at church. We actually run a special needs ministry. We have 60 adults. My wife and I actually have 60 adult special needs that we take on outings. We have Sunday school year round. So we do that year round. And that's the passion. But it's so passionate, I used to be a Muslim, and I actually converted to okay, Christianity based on that. No so there's Amen. a lot going on. There's a lot going on, believe me. So thank you. So there we go. The art of delegation. How to get others to do your work so you can get on to what you're really supposed to be doing. Okay? Any questions, please don't hesitate at any time. What is delegation? The act of delegating or investing with authority to act for another. Or another way to put the distribution of responsibility and authority to others while holding them accountable for their performance. Why delegate? To use skills and resources already within the group. My personality is, unfortunately, I'm a painter. All right. There's two types of communications, pointers and painters. My wife, when she talks, goes on and on on and on, like, honey, get to the point. She'll put this big picture. Unfortunately, I think I'm a pointer. I like to get to the point. So as a general manager, though, I'm listening to a member, and in my head, I'm thinking, geez, you know, let's get, up, let's get, you know, let's get the show going. So I actually have a lot of my staff. I tell them up front, I'm a pointer. I think it's a flaw sometimes. I need painters to cover up my pointing. So I look at trying to get skills within the group and not everyone's strengths, everyone's weaknesses. I've got weaknesses. I have staff here that help me with my weaknesses, offset my weaknesses, vice versa. So that's huge. To keep from burning out a few leaders. Try to do everything you get burnt out. To develop new leaders and build new skills within the group. I love to have staff that I like to mentor. And at some point, I see them as tennis directors. It gives me great pleasure. So I bring in the staff saying, hey, I want to mentor you, I want to help you, this is how we can work. To get things done, definitely more efficiently and effectively, I delegate. 
to prevent the group from getting too dependent on one or two leaders. I'm confident enough when I'm away, I don't have to call up the club, hey, how's everything going? How's the social going? I'm comfortable. Be as strong as your weakest link. When's the true test of when you're a good director, general manager? When you're away from the club. A lot of times you on the phone, hey, how's the social going? You know, how's the team planning going? There you go. To become more powerful as a group. What does team stand for? Together, everyone achieves more. Right? Where's the I in team? It's in the A hole. Everybody here? If you look at team, right? Where's I? It's in the A hole. <laughs> so together, everyone achieves more. That's huge. To allow everyone to feel a part of the effort and the success. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You develop a team through delegation on the day. Any questions so far on why delegate? All good? Group members feel more committed if they have a role and feel needed. Like I said, people don't care what you know until you know what you care. Why not delegate? It's too hard. It takes too much time. It may be a lot of investment, time investment up front, but in the end, the dividends are unbelievable. Nobody can do it as good as I can. But how are you going to get good at that? Give them a chance. Nobody else has any time either. You know, I chuckle when people say, I don't have time. 167 hours a week, yes? Same time you have. It's, a, it's not a matter of having time, it's a matter of making time. We all have the same amount of time. It's choosing what you want to delegate and what you want to do. Steps in delegation. I like the acronym IDEALS. Introduce the task. I'm going to explain each one. Demonstrate clearly what needs to be done. Yes, that's right. Demonstrate clearly what needs to be done. Ensure understanding. Allocate authority, information, and resources. Let go. Support and monitor. Those are the steps in delegation. What I'd like to do now is talk about each one of them and how to become more efficient and effective in each one. I'll introduce the task. A couple steps. Determine tasks to be delegated. Determine tasks to retain that you need to keep. Select the delegate. Right, let's talk about the first one. Determine tasks to be delegated. Those tasks you've completed five I cry to assuming your new role. You can really get those right there. Those <coughs> tasks your delegates have more experience with. I'm an old fart. I'm not really familiar with the Facebook aspect, etc., etc. Guess who I use? You lovely 30 members. You guys rock. You guys help the team. It's awesome. When I'm in doubt, guess who I ask? My kids. Guess why? 30 members. You guys are awesome. Grow. We need you. Okay? Smile. That's right. <laughs> we need you. Definitely. Okay. Routine activities. Delegate those. Those things not in your core competency. Social media, man, I'm getting this. But I've got Brad and the staff, awesome with that. And they love that too. So, any questions on determining the task to be delegated? I've got a lot of experience in Jets. Speak, <coughs> speak, talk to me. Share some love you too, okay? So jump in any time you guys want, please. There you go. Next one, determine tasks that you need to retain as the general manager or the director. The supervision of subordinates. That's huge. You've got to keep that under your belt. Long-term planning, whether it's strategic, operational, or financial. Tasks only you can do. Okay? Obviously, in my situation, it's the budgeting aspect, but I've got two staff that are actually trained with the budgeting aspect. Right. Assurance of program compliance. The buck stops with you in the end. Dismissal of volunteers, members, parents, etc. Leave that all to me. Any questions on that? Comments, chats, ladies? Is this early in the morning, or are you all speechless? <laughs> yeah. Any comments? All good? Great. Selecting the delegate. 
who do you choose? Knowing your staff most of, like, based on motivation and skill. I will discuss this later. Right. Look at individual strengths and weaknesses. Determine interest areas. Now, what I typically do when I hire new staff, the first thing I look at is, number one, they've got to be certified. Second thing I like to do is I like to call up the national office. Let's have high, well, potentially pro X is interested. I'd like to see how many continuing education credits they've done. Are they green and growing or ripe and rotting? Well, they've been a member since 1992 and they've done two credits. What does that tell me? I don't think it's green and growing, but they're ripe and rotting. That's the first thing I look at. I remember the, the job in Pittsburgh I took came in, there were 20 pros working there. Had the pros come in, I had two positions I had to fill in. So what I did was, I had the job descriptions, I had the two staff, let's say I had Rick and Tom that were interested in the two positions. Kevs, these are all the responsibilities I want you guys to do. Divvy it out, okay? Whatever's left over, I'm gonna divvy out. So this way, I give them ownership to their job responsibilities. Obviously, they chose what they like. Whatever was left over, agree to disagree, non-negotiable, pass it over. Also, have them choose their own titles. Gives them ownership, helps them, okay, also helps them put their resume into it. So, this way, you know the interest areas, the whole nine yards, it helps you select the delegate, you also know the people that are there too. Any questions on that? No? Nope. Determine the need for the development <coughs> of the delegate. Once again, like I said, a lot of mentoring I like to do. I actually have a long-term plan for them on court, off court. How do they want to be mentored or trained? I look into that too. Introduce the task. Use what, why statements. I want you to do blank because you whatever. Brad, I want you to do the Facebook social media for the social coming up because you're great at that. And because you're a great painter, you'll do a good job versus the point view. Give them ownership on that. Demonstrate clearly, this is you. So examples of previous work. This is what you're gonna be doing. Let me give an example of what we did previously. See what you like from there, excitement, see what you use there, what you more of the expectation there. Explain objectives, this is huge. The meaning of communication is the response he elicits. Well, coach, I thought you told me this, but you meant this, so. Tom, I just mentioned this. Could you just clearly just clarify what I said? A lot of times I have a tendency of sudden you on the same page. Communication is both sending and receiving. Well, something's wrong with Tom. He's not getting it. How many fingers pointing to Tom? One, where the others point to? To me. So maybe it's the way I'm sending it compared to how it's being received. Discuss timetables, set deadlines. This is huge. Just get it done sometime next week. Yeah. Chuck, any way we could look at getting this project done by next Friday, 12 noon? What do you think? Is that is that feasible? Feasible, get it? Yeah? So yeah, he holds the time to that. <laughs> okay. So he's got the ownership of the timetable too. Ensuring understanding. Clear communication, like I said, the sending and the receiving. Make sure that's ask for clarification. So Chuck, what do you think I meant by that? Okay. Secure commitment. And once again, ask for clarification. I got a story here. You know, you all like right, I have a bad accent sometimes, people don't understand me. So my daughter, I have to share the story, share the story. Here. My daughter used to work at the tennis desk at the club. And she comes home one day and says, Dad. That guy Kevin is really a pain in the butt. I said, no, dude, this guy's kind of strange, you know. That was a pawn shop. She's like, oh my God, Dad, that's just sick. I don't want to hear it. Well, my accent, I make P-A-W-N, <laughs> not P-O-R-N. <laughs> <laughs> so back to communication. Yes, I got an accent. It's, you know, I go to the airport sometimes. They give me a hard time because of my accent. Oh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I have a problem with that too. Oh, <laughs> 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 I don't know, Tom's gonna no. suck back, so that goes on more. No. So let's just say this, like, you gotta clarify that. Seriously, there's been so many times. I mean, I remember presenting once, I was at the World Conference, and I'm presenting, and this Greek guy in the corner, this is one of my highlights, stands up and cusses me out. There were like 200 people, I forgot who it was. 
You are so rude. You know, it's a Greek accent. I you keep moving around and you have your back toward me. You are so rude. You know, I was like, so I apologize. I got 20 minutes left. I promise what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stand right beside you and present the rest of the time. And I did that. And that evening at the welcoming party, I said, I'm going to get this guy. And I found him. We sat together. And people that were there, like, yeah, this is the jerk that was beside me. Yes, we became best of buddies then. So I just have to share that story. It's funny. That was funny. No relevance to that, but there's a story I have to say. <laughs> Thank but, you. Yes. When you go on with the communication, not just the what, but like the how, you make sure that, I don't know, it doesn't seem like you're a dictator or anything like that. Is there any kind of, I don't know, I don't know if necessarily pertain to this slide in point, but that was a question that. Just like teaching tennis, right? You've got a command style. You're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. In yesterday's um, specialty course, I like the guided discovery. Ask a lot of questions. Correct? It shows caring versus this is what you're going to do. So what do you guys think of this? What do you think of that? I never try to put myself up on a pedestal like I'm this general manager. I tell the staff, we're equal. Because it's basically, there's no communication, right? There's upward communication, there's downward, let me explain, there's downward communication, and there's horizontal communication. You will do this today. Do you understand? And what is that? Downward. Yes, sir, I'm sorry, I will. Upward, right? I like the horizontal communication. What do you think of this idea, Tom? Any other thoughts or suggestions? From horizontal. What does that show? That you care yeah. and you value the opinion. If I'm talking down to you, there's something I don't like to do. This is me. Standing behind the podium. What is this doing right now? Setting a barrier. I am the man. I'm the big daddy. Listen to me. I personally like to engage, learn from Mr. Greek man, <laughs> who stand and move around. So the personal touch. Does that answer your question? So use more guided discovery for my suggestion. Cool. Ask the questions in that. Okay. Don't say no to them. <coughs> now, I, mean, I don't get this. Give it a try. Just try it out again. It shows the value for that. Collaboratively determine methods for follow-up. Collaboratively. For teamwork. Team. Together, everyone achieves more. That's huge. Allocate authority, information, and resources. This is huge right now. Grant authority to tell a process, not design outcomes. <coughs> Make them aware of the process, not the outcome. <coughs> Fortunately, being in the industry long enough, I don't know everything. If, I've got, if I need some information, I'll call up somebody. Hey, I need some help with such and such. Cardio tennis, call up Sophie. Sophie, can you help me out over here? Dressing up good, just call up Chuck. <laughs> what I say, Chuck's a mess. <laughs> so just go, go everywhere. It's no problem at all, right? Provide access to all information sources. A lot of times when I've chosen a delegate to actually do a project, and let's say Chuck's the man or whatever, I'll have them contact Chuck. Why? Build another relationship there too. Networking is huge. Refer delegate to contact persons or specific resources that assisted previously. So I just said okay. Any questions so far? Making sense or not? Yes? I can't send this PowerPoint to all of you, please. Some of us put this stuff there. And providing appropriate training to ensure success. Continual growth for both the team, the individual, and obviously the organization. Let go. Communicate delegates authority. It was an issue I had. I was in Australia in January, and I delegated some of the um, tasks to some of the pros. But when I got back two weeks later, one of the ladies came and says, you know, I'm going to use an example. Tom really irritated me. He was so pushy, you know, and, you know, he actually was <coughs> in charge. You know, he really irritated me. So Tom has just been in the industry for two years. And I said, you know, in life you can be a pilot or a passenger. I said, Tom, I'm glad you're a pilot. But quite frankly, are you doing the 747 or one of the little rinky-dink planes? I said, well, unfortunately, the way it was perceived, 
you're the power of the 767, but you just got the Ricky thing. So just, just watch how you go about doing things. I'm glad you're how it fits. You're not quite because so I got them together and they sorted it out. She was so ready this guy. He was so proud so pushy. And, Whoa, we got some props. We got them together. I was in kiss and everything worked out well after that. So you gotta know the authority in terms of the communication and to what degree. Step back, let them know. This is the toughest one. <coughs> we learn more from what? Our mistakes, yes? Correct. Okay. I tell the staff, I want you to screw up. I'll back you up. But screw that's how we learn more. How do I learn more with the kids? Set them down, they give me a B minus based on their perception. So let them learn through the mistakes. Let's look, screw up, it is legitimate, we'll work it out. Don't get slack about it now. Just work hard on that. Use constrained access. Brett, call me up all the time. I mean, I got calls in Australia. I said, dude, time zone's different. No, don't call. Unless it's, unless it's important, you call me up. You got to learn the hard way. Tough luck. Not going to go with guys. Don't allow for reverse delegation. Brad was pretty good when I was away. He then started delegating it to the others. I mean, no, 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 no. You're in charge of that, Brad. To not delegate over to Sophie again. No, no. you're in charge of that. But I thought you gave me the authority. <laughs> you tried that. You tried the reverse delegation on that one. Support and monitor. Schedule follow up meetings. How are things are, and that's where the communication, horizontal communication is important. Review progress with those deadlines and the timeline. Assist when requested. Let go, like we said earlier. Avoid interference. Everything making sense? No questions so far? Publicly praise progress and completion. This is huge. Same thing happens on court. A lot of times when we ask questions on court, it's typically, well, what happened then? Great. Versus, Greg, tell me two things you did well on that last point. Tell me some things you're doing well right now. You know, Tom, great job with the way you're handling the social. You're doing an awesome job. Tell me what you're doing well and what you can okay, learn from that moving forward. Encourage problem solving. That's huge. Delegation stresses. What thing stresses number one? Stress number one, loss of control. If you train your subordinates to apply the same criteria as you would yourself, then you'll be exercising your control on your behalf. Does that make sense to you? A lot of times people are worried about, well, if I delegate too well, I may not have a job. <coughs> what do you guys think? A better job. You do a better job. Do people feel it's a loss of control. You know, what's the GM or the board going to think about? That's where you got to make them aware of how you actually function. Because I had a tough time at the club I was at. The general manager that before was there from nine to eleven at night, nine in the morning to eleven at night. I told him up front, I'm not going to be like that. I've got more to life. There's more I want to do. This I want to do. This is how I operate. Do you have a problem with that? So, upfront communication with that, loss of control over this line. Stress number two, too much time spent on explaining tasks. God, it's so much work to talk to Brad. That's right. Like I said earlier, the amount of time spent up front is in fact great, but continuous use of delegation may free you up to complete more uh, complex tasks and to gain some time for yourself. That's huge. What's the most important thing for us, do you think? A job or family? Family, right? Every time we go to function, we talk about family. I don't talk about my job. Family is key. And what drove home to me was my two girls. That was the biggest eye-opener when we were five and six years old. They said, Dad, F minus versus a B plus. That drove home the importance of just having an overall life. In fact, on Wednesday, no, Monday, I'm doing a webinar on uh, uh, the support triangle, how to balance your life. How to manage your time, makes sense. So that's something you want to get into. I'll be doing a webinar at Eastern time, two to three. Free webinar, good education will be you know, received for that. So 
this actually gets into, so this is one thing I present, you know, like I said, supporting the support triangle balancing your life is what I was talking about on Monday. So, stress number three, compromising your own value. By successfully utilizing appropriate delegation, your value to the group organization will grow at a greater rate as you'll have more time to do more things. I'm blessed to be able to do all this stuff, traveling, speaking, you know, hopefully being on the national board, I'm very excited with that. As well as having a family life of their own life. Practice makes perfect. It gets easier the more you do it. Okay, that's definitely from that one. You become more familiar with your delegates. <coughs> I mean, there's staff now that I all over the country, they keep in touch with me and tell me what's going on. It's just a great relationship. It really is. You become familiar with them personally and professionally, too. That helps. Flow through task delegation. It's so much easier, too. Consequences of poor delegating. Information and decision making not shared by the group. Leaders become tired out. When leaders leave groups, no one has experience to carry on. I'm tough enough when I leave my position at this club, which I'm planning on doing soon anyway, it would be a smooth transition. Group morale becomes low and people become frustrated and feel powerless. When does conflict occur? When expectations and reality don't match, all right? I hire somebody, I give them worst case scenario. Reality, this is worst case scenario. Expectations all of a sudden high, there's no conflict. So if we get expectations in reality, in sync, conflict will be low. The skills and knowledge of the group organization are concentrated in a few people. That's some of the problems of poor delegating. New members don't find any ways to contribute to work of the group. To work of the group. And finally, the secret of success is not in doing your own work, but recognizing the right person to do it. The secret of success is not in doing your own work, but in recognizing the right person to do it. Degrees of delegation. This is interesting. That's what I'm supposed to tell you. But you've got to know your staff. So I hire people, interview them, talk to them, etc. Categorize your staff who has high motivation, high skill. Everybody with me on that? High motivation, low skill. Low motivation, high skill. You got problems here, low motivation, low skill. If you've hired someone with low motivation, low skill, you screwed up. <laughs> and I screwed up in the last six months. I had this gentleman, he's from Florida. He gave a great cup of lettuce and you know, I heard you speak in convention space on this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff. He spoke to his references. His references gave him glowing remarks. When he came, it was totally opposite. This was the most challenging person of the year. For low motivation, low skill. Do you have some of those? Yes? No? How do you deal with each one of those? Okay, so I'm going to categorize each one. Right. High motivation, high skill. Motivated, it's got the skill set. <laughs> I can fully delegate to that person. Agree? Run with the show. This is what you'd like to strive for the high motivation. High motivation, low skill. Very motivated. I'm still new in the industry. I'm not really too sure. Develop and train. Work with the team member to complete the task and assign additional development training resources. These are the two you're dying for. Anybody with me on that one? Yes? No motivation, high skill. This guy's got the skill, but man, there's no motivation with this person. No motivation whatsoever. Manage and mentor. Monitor programs and management support. 
come to Mediterranean. No motivation, no skill. A sign. I explain this to be here. Delegate specific tasks to project but retain prime responsibility. This person right here, six months into the job, this is a funny story. Didn't really care about himself. He had bad body odor. Okay. So the staff and the members come to us, this guy's got bad, bad body odor. How do I deal with this? I get the guy coming, he's like, look, you know, uh, there's been some complaints, and I kind of agree with that. He looks at me and says, could you smell me and tell me where I smell bad on a scale of <laughs> one to 10? <laughs> 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 I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and then five minutes later, I s so now it's just, you know, how do you wash, what do you, do you use? I'm literally doing this, I'm smelling this, says, man, that's weird. I was like, excuse me, smelling your deodorant is weird and you want me to smell your armpits and your crotch? And tell me skills, and you tell me this is bad? So it's just, it's just interesting, so, you know, not motivated at all, long story short, his laundry would be in piles, he wouldn't wash his laundry, he would actually ch turn his underwear upside down. It's, it's ridiculous, yes. But how do you go with that? The same guy started off high, had him as a pilot, running certain programs. Well, he became a passenger. Well, and then I said, look, I'm going to have to throw you out of this plane. <laughs> I basically <laughs> turned that guy. But I tried so hard. I spent so much. I don't have more gray since you're I tried so hard to motivate this guy. I said, look. I want to work with you. You've been the greatest challenge to me in my career. I want to make this work. It just didn't work. It just didn't work. Rest of the time. So that is the challenge, the most challenging one right there. All right, your assignment, please, ladies, gentlemen, and ladies. Think of five tasks you are currently doing that could be done here. All right. Once you have chosen these five tasks. Use the ideal steps of, uh, of, of delegation. Sound good? Good luck and enjoy the journey. Questions, 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 questions. Comments, come on. Yes, sir. You know, in some of the meetings they say like once a week there's a staff meeting. Do you think to do kind of the model that you've set up that it takes more than once a week or once a week do it or? You know, I always ask the staff, I'm going to give you a story, I always ask the staff, what is it you don't like about me? It's not me. So what, what actions do you disagree or don't like about me? And the one thing they say is you bug us like crazy with communication. You call us up like crazy. I'm like, I hate to say it, but that's not negotiable. We're going to bug you to death. Do we typically over-communicate or under-communicate? Under-communicate. So, yes, I have staff meetings. But I'm constantly on the phone with each of the individuals. I'm learning how to text better because a lot of them don't pick their phones up, you'd rather text them. Two minutes later, you try calling them up, they don't pick them. So I can pick it up. So I ask everybody, what's the best way? How do you like me to communicate with you? Besides the staff, here? text, email, whatever, phone calls. What are you? And ask each one individually, what's your mode of communication with each other? Personally, being the old fart that I am, I like the phone. But you, you 30 is like the texting stuff, so I, I gotta get with the program with that. So I ask them how to do that. So I believe in over-communication versus under-communication. Make sense? Any other questions? Motivating the, uh, the high-skilled but non-motivated or how to basically, I guess not just delegation, but just how to get the most out of them. How? Anybody have a question? Someone's highly motivated, correct? No, no motivation but high skills, yes. right? Well, when I first hired you, right, let's pretend you're that person. We sat down with the long development plan. Right? Do you want to grow in this industry? Yes, I do. Right? What do you want to work on, on court, off court? I can give you this template too. And we spell out exactly what you want to work on. Off court, I want to learn how to do the budgeting, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we look at certain things. Right? Once we've done that, we then prioritize. Out of these six things you've chosen, what's the number one thing you want to learn first? So by doing that, aren't you part of that process? And hopefully, based on you telling me this, unless you're BSing me, that's what's going to motivate you, yes? It's kind of like setting goals. Setting goals together, but who's got the setting goals together? Yes. 
get that's those. Good. Thank you very much. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, go ahead. I think it's low motivation. You mentioned that in this question right now. It's always fascinating. When I manage people, I felt if I couldn't turn them around and really make them be more motivated, I was failing. So I'd go home and kick the dog and yell at the wife and that kind of stuff. I can't do that with my wife and kids. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it was a real light bulb moment for me when it, when it dawned on me, if they're low motivation, it's due to their own value system. When I realized I'd work with them, you set goals like you're doing and all this kind of stuff, but if it didn't work, I really became heartless at extracting them from the system. And, and because if they're not motivated, I've never been able to make a leopard change his spots in 30 years. It's tough. Gotcha. Well, hopefully, with the interview process yeah. and the hiring process, if you pick that up, you won't have a problem. But I goofed up on that one. It was challenging. It really ate me up because I tried everything I could. I'm like, I even tried, I said, staff, I've done everything <coughs> I can. Can you guys jump in and help? So I actually, staff, take over. They were like, we're done, dude. This, this guy's it's crazy. OK, like, we got to go. You know, so that's fine. Any other questions? Uh, also, along that line, sometimes some of these people come in and they don't feel like they're they don't have the ownership. That it's like it, you know, this kind of goes back to what we were talking in his um, Tom's or in the talks yesterday. Is the ownership by the workers that helps them to feel like that's a responsibility? You know, I know like a, assistant pros who are kind of be in that classification. Those who they just come and do their lessons and they're gone basically. So when they feel like they have ownership in what's going on, they start hanging around and and, and see see more fruit. They see by being there, they see more fruits of their labor. Is that a question? Or is well, it's kind of a statement. Right. So. Well, I know I had one staff pro that said, "Look, I just moved from Mexico. My wife's getting a baby. I just want to come in and teach, and that's it." Mm -hmm. I said, I respect that. He's a very, very good on court pro. That's very fine. All the other pros knew what his setup was, so they weren't really upset. But later on, down the road, he says, Look, I'm not ready to come a little bit more involved. It's part of the thing. No problem at all. So I actually right. put him as an independent contractor. Right. But then that, but that was a communication. That's what the goal. Exactly, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm a new assistant pro. I mean, he's, you know, a nice guy, just kind of walks around and teaches his lesson, but he wants to get established. So he comes to the club and walks around and watches the league matches and hangs out, but he's not a salaried employee. Um, but I don't really want to pay him to be there, especially, you know, since I already have somebody else in the pro shop and bring phone calls doing rackets and he's just walking around and walking around and walking around. <laughs> so anyway, um, how do you handle, I mean, because I, I think it's a good thing that he's there, because if he's not there, he's not going to grow his lessons. So. Right. And once in a while, I'll pick up something and somebody will walk up to him. But how do you handle the remuneration for that? All right. Sai comes in. He really wants to learn with me. I was like, look, Sai, I'm being honest right now. I can help you grow as a pro. Reality check, okay, reality is I don't have the money to do that right now. I've got this much, this is the wiggle room. I tell him up front, I will help you grow professionally as much as you can. Financially, we've got a fine line here. I let them know up front. And I get a lot of, I don't mean this in a bad way, free labor that way. Because they're willing to take that chance and want to grow their skill set. So I let them know up front. I don't have the money, so if it's the, I mean, I've lost a lot of good people. I just don't have the money to give it to you. You want to take that chance? That's your call. Let them know up front. Anytime I can help you, I will try. That's what I've done with them. Yes, Hey, how would you suggest to deal with somebody that you know that is a good employee, that person started and was very motivated, then all of a sudden that person got demotivated, but you know that that person has the potential. What would you suggest to do? The minute I'm sensing demotivation occurring, I'm not going to wait till it's gone downhill all the way. The minute I sense a change, like a momentum shift, like in a match, the minute I see a momentum shift occurring, I'm going to come say, Hoy, I'm noticing, correct me if I'm wrong now. I'm noticing you've got a, okay, a lack of motivation here. Correct me if I'm wrong. What's happening? Makes sense? I want to nip it in the butt right now. So let's say I go to you and, okay, Hoy, right, I'm noticing you're getting on, okay, motivation is kind of declining. Talk to me. What's happening? Let's role play. Let's make something up. Make something up. Uh, 
problem with the family. You got problems with that? Right. Can I help in any way? I mean, do you want to discuss it? Can I help in any way? Probably yes. Okay. How can I help you? <coughs> uh, we need to make more money. All right. Making enough money. That's great, right? Okay, now. I'd like to help you, but do you agree that your motivation has declined? Yes or no? I haven't seen it. Okay, well, unfortunately, I've noticed it, and members have noticed it. So, if your motivation is low, and obviously you need more clients to make more money, and your clients are seeing your motivation is declining, what's going to happen to your lesson base? Gonna decline or right. disappear. So, what can we do, despite what's going on at home, to get that motivation up so your clients can actually start coming back and get more work talked about? What can we do? What can we do? How can I help you? Uh, watch, watch my lessons and see how I can improve my, you know, my motivation during the lesson. Now, I actually watch people teach. <coughs> now, your lessons are great. But it's your body language, it's your posture. People are saying, you know, you're looking at your clock, you know, you're looking at your watch. Well, what's that showing? You got a date or what? You know? So let's look at things that intrinsically motivate you. Let's look at that. But I will still come and take a look. Would you mind if I ask some of the members what they thought? I won't give you any names. Would you mind if I ask them how Because in fact, I ask a lot of members a lot of times, you know. How is the lesson with Chuck? I need to know because I want to make Chuck better. I will not mention, Tom, that you told me what, what you thought. Let me know so I can help. And I, mean, I tell the staff up front, I will be asking members on the lessons. Are you okay if I do that? Yeah. That's where I go about it. Answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basil? Yes. So where did you get feedback from that lesson? All right, so feedback is um, the coach talked too much, the face was too soft. <coughs> I didn't feel like I got my money more. Alright, so you're the pro. What's your reaction to it? Okay, I'll sit down with the pro and say, look, this is the perception of the man. Right? That's their reality. Perception is, okay, it's reality. Let's look at it from the client's, okay, eyes. What do you think you did that made them think that way? <coughs> they said you were talking too much and the drills were too slow. So why don't you recap what you think you did, right? And, look, and, and let's look at what we could do differently. Does that make sense to you? So for example, they said you, you obviously spoke too much. Well, how did the drill start off? You know, did you explain the drill too long? What do you think? So if where do you think you actually spoke? But once again, it's their perception. I'm not agreeing with them, I'm not saying you're wrong. It's their perception. In the end, they're the client. So where do you think you could tune down the fact in terms of not talking too much. Where do you think you could do better? I think probably at the beginning of my lesson, I talk too much. Okay, what do you think you do when you talk too much? Uh, it's probably the lovely accent they like, but I think it's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. so, so where do you think you can trim the fat there? What do you th does that make sense to you, though? So does that make sense? But notice I'm using the guide of discovery, just asking them, giving them the ownership. Remember one time I had a staff pro at another club, and this guy says, man, Fable gives me enough rope to hang myself. And I said, really? I said, it's two ways to look at it. I'm giving you enough rope to climb up, but you want to hang yourself. I said, that's your choice. The rope's the rope. You can climb up, you can hang yourself. That's your choice. I'm here to help you climb up. But the key thing is ask questions. Because, you know, I heard this was really bad. You got to discover it. You got to discover it. Just like how we teach. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, how, whenever you, you're a busy person as well, uh, do you uh, delegate and whenever the perception is you're just trying to offload tasks onto the staff so you don't have to do as much? In other words, um, where at times they end up being on site more than you, you are. And I know you travel a lot, so uh, there's got to be a, a balance between keeping the staff engaged and, and instead of it, uh, them feeling like, you know, Basil's just offloading a lot of stuff on us so he can drive when be gone and defer his You're career. talking about the staff or you're talking about the members? The staff. I tell the staff up front, this is my passion. I love to travel and speak. I'm being up front. This is how you're going to help me. I tell them up front, 
This is what I like to do. This is how you're going to help me. And when I travel to conventions, how am I going to help you? The convention brochure, we'll sit down and we'll discuss it. You're going to learn too. The good news is you don't have to pay to go to them. And everything will be in-house. I let them know. I tell them up this is what I like to do. And I said, if any members come to you and complain Fable's not here, let's make sure we're on the same page. Don't throw me under the bus. I'm going to clarify that. That's one. So I make sure that they get value when I travel. I bring the convention brochure with them. We go over the stuff. What do you guys want to do? Do that kind of stuff. So, make sense to me? Okay. Any other questions? The upfront part you mentioned about that, and then also, like, when you tell the people you're hiring that um, you would be like, talking to their lessons about how the lessons went. Mm -hmm. When you say upfront, is it like once they're hired or like while you're hiring them, like during the job interview? Or just tell them upfront. I hear the you come in here, these are the expectations to reality. I'm a pain in the butt from what I've been told. In fact, I actually have potential people talk to the other side. I said, well, do me a favor, you've heard me. Right? There's three sides to a story. The one side, the other side is the truth. You've heard my side of the story. Feel free to talk to them. Okay, call my staff pros up and ask them. If we're interested in talking more, talk to my staff. Get them, and I tell the staff, be honest with them. Tell them I'm a pain in the butt. Tell them, you know, whatever. Tell them whatever, be honest with them. So I actually have potential interviewees talk to the rest of the staff without me being there. I give them the phone number, they call them up and ask them. Because I really want them to get a true sense of the environment they're going to be in. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. <coughs> I'm in the process of hiring. Okay, what time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then slowly scaring me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, scared, scared. I'm in the process of hiring a pro shop manager. One just uh, resigned after 10 years. And I uh, just got on a boat and went to the Bahamas. <laughs> Anyway, um, wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's a lot of story. I, it's just me and my wife that teach tennis. She homeschools six kids, so I'm doing most of the teaching. Um, my question is, well, I'm on the, while I'm on the tennis court from, say, 1.30 to 7, and there's idle time in the pro shop, you know, how do I delegate? Cause she makes you know X amount of dollars per hour where I'm making salary plus lessons and I remember formerly her, her motivation was a lot lower because she saw what I was bringing in and I want her to you know start doing programming and, and, and uh, buying merchandise how can I keep that person from just surfing the internet you know and just be more authoritative because I try to give ownership to my, my people and I, I try to hire people smarter than me <coughs> and, and I trust them and uh, I'm too naive or too trusting, I think. So any any help in that category? Do I just need to sit with that person and create goals? And, and do, I, do I need a to-do list that they have to go over every day? I mean, what do you recommend? How much ownership do you give these people? When someone comes in, we go over the job description. Do you have a job description spelled, yes. spelled up? Yes. Do you have all the extra Fills and fills you want them to do. I mean, it's general. We need to be because it's specific. You got to be more specific. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. look, like I can only hold somebody accountable for what they're supposed to do. Yes. But they can only do what they're supposed to do if they know what they're supposed to do. Yeah, right. And how's that be clarified? Through a job description. Spell everything out. And I actually have a job description, and they initial every line. The bottom it says, by initiating every line, I totally understand what I'm responsible for. If you want to throw in, you know, like, oh, the front desk has to do certain trash on that. Well, I'm not going to do any trash. I will dance, you fed. No, 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 no. You signed it. You signed it. So it's laid up front. Yeah, all those expectations are out front. Thank you. You know, they know what they're walking into. You created a culture of what you want. And they've agreed to the job, and this is the job, and there it is. My question is, how <coughs> often do you have these team meetings? Or because well, right. yeah. to me, the responsibilities are done up front. When I hired you, this, this was it. You understood that, you initialed it. Yeah. And every three months we go, we say, you're doing well in this category. You know, I kind of see you surfing, you know, you know, and you're doing such and such, so. When you get a city job, it's almost impossible oh, to terminate right? somebody. Wow. When you're at a country club, you have more free will to fire that person. So I got to be very careful who I hire. That person lasted 10 years. 
five of those years unmotivated. Uh, stepsister, nepotism, it was very difficult to get rid of this woman. It's a win-win situation for me now. So I got something to say. No, I just said hire slow and fire fast. There you go. Mm -hmm. in, in 90 days, it's not hard to fire. Mm -hmm. I, I feel if they had somebody that was like five years, it was a tenured employee that you couldn't unmotivate. Sam. Stop the document, <laughs> pull the trigger quick. How, how do you, um, in your budget and, and with your staff, you obviously encourage them to, to continue their education. How do you, how do you budget for that? And what do you the, club for them? Right, the club I'm, well, I'm at now is zero for budget for education. Zero. Other clubs have a huge budget. So what I do is like, look, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. I go to all these conventions, I'll bring the information, give you the handouts, and we'll discuss it on court. You're going to get education. I'll, right, I'll be the sales rep going out there. I'll come and we'll do the stuff there. So we do that thing. So I think budgets, correct me if I'm wrong, Chuck, a lot of clubs now, as far as education budgets, actually, it's tough to try to get some. That's, that's the situation that yeah. I'm in where I work. I mean, they, they will, will not pay. Yeah. yeah, if I could, it's tough to add. But one thing you might want to do is, is ask them to put it in the budget. And if you know you're going to do it, you're going to pay for it out of your own pocket. Offer to take a reduction in your salary so that you can go because tax wise you make out right. And, and plus, when you tell them that, then they really begin to see that you think it's really important that you're actually paying for it yourself. And if you know the registration at a conference that you really are going to go to and you're going to pay for yourself is $300, just say, Look, could, could you give me, could I take $300 off what I make? And that way, Tax wise, you, you make a few percent that way. Okay. Else? Uh, you described the situation where you hired someone and you went over the job description for that person and they initialed everything. <laughs> what happens if you're the new person, you, you're the new director, and there's an existing staff? Do you then go back over what a job description is? Now, remember the club I was at? I had the 15 pros. I wanted to revamp the structure. I had these two pros that were interested. I put all the job description down, and I said, look, I want to create two new positions. I'd like the two of you to get involved in this position. These are the responsibilities for these two positions. You guys get together, I'll be out of the equation. You guys get together, choose what you want, what you like to do. Whatever's left over, I will do the other. And then you choose your title. That's what I did with the club, I gave them ownership. And obviously, Tom chose what he liked. Okay, you chose what you liked, and we went in there. So it gives a feeling of ownership. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the time. Guys, when you go.